the Egyptian story of the creation. If we consider for a moment the vast amount of thought which the Egyptian gave to the problems of the future life, and their deep-seated belief in resurrection and immortality, we cannot fail to conclude that he must have theorized deeply about the constitution of the heaven in which he hoped to live everlastingly, and about its maker. The translations given in the preceding pages prove that the theologians of Egypt were ready enough to describe heaven, and the life led by the blessed there, and the powers and the attributes of the gods, but they appear to have shrunk from writing down in a connected form their beliefs concerning the creation and the origin of the Creator. The worshippers of each great god proclaimed him to be the creator of all, and every great town had its own local belief on the subject. According to the Heliopolitans, Adam, or Tem, and at a later period Ah, was the creator, according to Memphite theology he was Da, according to the Hermopolitans he was Thoth, and according to the Thebans he was Amenamun. In only one native Egyptian work up to the present has there been discovered any connected account of the creation, and the means by which it was effected, namely, the British Museum Papyrus, number 10188. This papyrus was written about 305 BC, and is therefore of a comparatively late date, but the subject matter of the works contained in it is thousands of years older, and it is only their forms which are of a late date. The story of the creation is found in the last work in the papyrus, which is called the Book of Overthrowing Apep, the enemy of Ah, the enemy of Unnefer that is Osiris. This work is a liturgy, which was said at certain times of the day and night in the great temple of Amenar at Thebes, with the view of preventing the monster Apep from obstructing the sunrise. Apep was supposed to lie in wait for the sun daily just before sunrise, with the view of doing battle with him and overthrowing him. When the sun god arrived at the place where Apep was, he first of all cast a spell upon the monster, which rendered him helpless, and then he cast his fiery rays upon him, which shriveled him up, and the fire of the god consumed him entirely. In the temple of Amenar the priests recited the spells that were supposed to help the sun god to burn up Apep, and they burned waxen figures of the monster in specially prepared fires, and, uttering curses, they trampled them underfoot and defiled them. These spells and burnings were also believed to break up rain clouds, and to scatter fog and mist and to dissipate thunderstorms, and to help the sun to rise on this world in a cloudless sky. Apep was a form of Set, the god of evil of every kind, and his allies were the red fiends and the black fiends, and every power of darkness. In the midst of the magical spells of this papyrus we find two copies of the book of knowing how R came into being, and of overthrowing Apep. One copy is a little fuller than the other, but they agree substantially. The words of this book are said in the opening line to have been spoken by the god Nebuchadnezzar, that is the lord to the uttermost limit, or god himself. The Egyptian Christians, or Copts, in their religious writings use this name as an equivalent of God Almighty the Lord of all, the God of the universe. Nebuchadnezzar says I am the creator of what hath come into being. I myself came into being under the form of the God Kepera. I came into being under the form of Porti or, in primeval time, I formed myself out of the primeval matter, I made myself out of the substance that was in primeval time. One nothing existed at that time except the great primeval watery mass called New but in this there were the germs of everything that came into being subsequently. There was no heaven, and no earth, and the God found no place on which to stand, nothing, in fact, existed except the God. He says, I was alone. He first created himself by uttering his own name as a word of power, and when this was uttered his visible form appeared. He then uttered another kind of word of power, and as a result of this his soul bar came into being, and it worked in connection with his heart or mind Ab. Before every act of creation Nebuchadnezzar, or his visible form Kepera, thought out what form the thing to be created was to take, and when he had uttered its name the thing itself appeared in heaven or earth. To fill the heaven, or place where he lived, the god next produced from his body and its shadow the two gods Shu and Tefnut. These with Nebuchadnezzar, or Kepera, formed the first triad of gods and the one God became three, or, as we should say, 
The one God had three aspects, each of which was quite distinct from the other. The tradition of the begetting of Shu and Tefnut is as old as the time of the pyramids, for it is mentioned in the text of PPI, L. 466. The next act of creation resulted in the emerging of the Eye of Nebuchadnezzar later identified with R from the watery mass new, and light shone upon its waters. Shu and Tefnut then united and they produced Keb, the earth god, and Nut, the sky goddess. The text then refers to some calamity which befell the eye of Nebuchadnezzar or of Kepera, but what it was is not clear, at all events the eye became obscured, and it ceased to give light.